Welcome back to Cold Waters with Whiskey. Last time we were together, we had taken care of a wolf pack of Soviet nuclear attack submarines, which was our mission, so we received a new one. So, from the Commander Submarines of Atlantic, we have a tactical situation where we have discerned patterns of movement of enemy at sea replenishment tankers and tenders. The small force, including one or two of these ships, expected to sail from Archangelsk and momentarily rendezvous near the Barents Sea. Our mission and we have no choice but to accept it, is to intercept the task group in order to sink it uh, to deny the enemy replenishment opportunities for their attack submarine fleet. So what we're going to do is we are going to move from the Norwegian Sea where we have engaged the trio of attack submarines and we are going to cross the Spitsbergen-Norway Sonarbui line, and along the way we hope to take out a few of the ASW patrols that we will probably see there. And sure enough, we come to the strategic map and immediately find one trying to patrol that area in particular. There are a couple of, oh wow, there's a lot coming up. So what we're going to do is we're going to clear our way, because clearing our way earlier as we approach the Barents Sea is actually going to make our exfiltration from the area much better. Good. We are engaging a surface group, so I'm thinking I should at least load some uh, TASMs with me. We're going to try and close to 15,000 yards. That's a really good effective range. It gives um, it gives us a chance to get them into the air before they uh, actually have a chance to respond. Okay, so we go into the mission and immediately pick up three contacts. That one's definitely going to be a Cashin. That looks like it might be a, if it's a surface ship, it might be a Cresta. It also looks more like, yeah, it's lining up to be more of a submarine. So we're going to call it a Victor 3 here. That, is that car? Yeah, that's car. Okay, so we found our three targets, one of which is a submarine, which is... Uh, not what I was really bargaining for, but Victor 3 is it's always feels like such a little threat. I want to be like, <laughs> I really wish that there were some more high tense moments in this. Um, but what we're going to do here is we're going to play it safe and we're going to load three torpedoes or torpedoes instead of the uh, TASMs that we had previously loaded. And most of that's because with the combination of submarine and surface group that we have in front of us we definitely don't want to give them any opportunities to start shooting a whole lot at us uh, as it will be we'll probably get a few and because we already have good uh, sonar contacts with all three of them we're going to go ahead and dive below um, the duct so that we can stay in the shadow zone. That shadow zone, by the way, varies. Uh, it, it's on both sides of the um, duct and or thermal layer line. In this particular case, we want to make sure that we see the um, Victor 3 before we worry about the, the surface vessels. So the Victor 3 is going active sonar at this point, and so what we've done is we've decided to go ahead and launch preemptively a uh, torpedo directly at it with the anticipation that he's going to wind up um, coming, after, coming after us if we don't go after him first. So torpedo in, that's active on tube one, we still have the wire for it, has been enabled. And what we do here is we just kind of got it to where we think the new cor where the Victor is at. Okay. 
Looks like the surface vessels are also pinging away on active sonar. So what we're doing now is manually controlling the torpedo for it to go down. I wish that at this point in time I had centered the map. Oh, and now it has an act, now it has an active solution. It is homing in on the Victor 3, which is wonderful. The Victor 3 is much closer than what we originally estimated it to be. And it looks like torpedo in tube 5 has acquired the Cashin. And from here, we're going to attempt to go after the ca the Kara, it looks like, with a pair of TASMs. We do have a number of those uh, still loaded in, in our store, so we really need to start using those. So now with just the Kara left, we are loading up the TASMs. Although when I'm looking at it, we're estimating them to be 21,000 yards, but I hope to gosh weapon is actually working fast. <laughs> Mostly because otherwise he's going to be inside of our launch envelope before we get an opportunity to shoot him down. So right now, the one advantage to really using the Mark 48 ad caps over doing TASMs or anything else is going to be the fact that you uh, are much harder to detect. I mean, the water vapor plumes and like towers that comes that follows after any of the launches, whether it's the harpoon or the TASMs, are just so large. It's like a giant here, aim to this location. The submarine's got to be nearby. Given that uh, even the Seawolf, which is a very, very fast submarine, only does a 35 kilometers per hour, or 35 knots uh, in this game, which it's really only about 40 miles an hour. So, you know, a car could go faster than this submarine. Granted, a car doesn't weigh what, it, what this thing weighs, isn't running on nuclear power, isn't running quiet at all. Um, but we're going to ignore all that stuff. Just for pure purpose of speed, the concept here is that it's that you're not going to be able to get away from your launch point given that you have to start at a rather slow speed. So here's the Tomahawks coming in, and you can see them shooting um, and it, one uh, torpedo back at us as well as actually having the um, countermeasures. But our first missile hit so we're going to dive deep and try and get out, get out of the way of this incoming torpedo. The car just shot at us in what NATO refers to as the SSN-14 Silex missile. It's essentially a short-range cruise missile that has a torpedo strapped to the bottom of it that is detached and is dropped. The advantage for the Russian Navy, by using the Silex, is that you get a chance to drop a torpedo immediately on top of your target, which minimizes reaction time. The disadvantage to it is, is that the torpedo, because it's air-launched, does not have a very long range or a very large warhead. Uh, what you're seeing here is, as we go into torpedo beats, is me trying to use a di slightly different strategy than what I typically use, which is just running deep and using knuckles. What I'm trying to do is defeat the torpedo by running it out of its energy um, through staying out of its um, aqu target acquisition cone, which is you know, the most part since it operates on sonar as well. So that's the reason why you saw me turn go deep at first and then turn back up and try and cross over it. So we've got it on, a, on our tail now, which is completely okay because this is actually where I'm more comfortable with. Uh, one thing that the Kara does have that I forgot to remember myself uh, that might have precluded me from shooting a torpedo is the fact that it runs with a um, KA-25 helicopter 
Warfare that is geared for anti-submarine warfare as well. In this particular case, we're lucky that the helicopter never spots us and drops more torpedoes on it, which is kind of amazing given that we have already launched two Tomahawk missiles from our previous uh, location, and then on top of that, we're running at a full full flank bell right now. Um, the Seawolf is a really incredibly quiet sub, and that is modeled correctly in the game. So what we're about to see here shortly is the torpedo just completely run out of fuel and detonate itself. We still have the helicopter nearby. We saw his uh, prop washing on the surface a little bit ago. So all we do is compress some time. So we're running away still at flank bell. And then there we go. So we've sunk our first of the two S of the two ASW patrols. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this has been Cold Waters with Whiskey Wilson. I do hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.